at least in the United States. Asics hasn't exactly been known for their trail shoes, but over the past couple of years, that has slowly started to change. And now, in the Trabuco Max 2, they're bringing my favorite road shoe midsole compounds to the trails. And I think it's a recipe for success. What's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the Asics Trabuco Max 2. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Asics sent to me for the purpose of review. So I didn't have to pay for these shoes, but no one's paying me to make this video or to use the shoe. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Asics Trabuco Max 2. Two. First, let's go over some specs on this shoe. This is a big boy. It's got 43 millimeters of stack height in the heel and a five millimeter drop, giving it a whopping 38 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. For the women, it's just one millimeter less, so you've got 42 and 37. Either way, men's or women's, this is a lot of midsole foam in this shoe. And that midsole is made out of one of my favorite midsole compounds, Asics FF Blast Plus. It's that same midsole compound that we've seen in really cushy, comfortable shoes like the Nimbus 25, but also really fun and springy shoes like the Nova Blast 3 and the Magic Speed 3. Normally, when we're looking at trail running shoes, we're looking for a Vibram outsole. We're not seeing that here in the Tribuco Max 2. Instead, we've got Asics grip but these lugs are in a unique pattern that's almost like kind of like a corkscrew kind of design they twist in terms of the way that the tiers of these stepped lugs are shaped and i feel like that helps to create a lot of really nice traction as it digs into the surfaces you're running on and also releases really nicely as well. On the upper, we have an engineered mesh, which is pretty straightforward. There are plenty of TPU overlays that are over the toe cap over here and along the sides and the back of the shoe to help keep debris from getting inside. There's a lot of puffiness in this shoe, a lot more than I typically like to see in a lot of my shoes, but it's also very reminiscent of what we saw in the Nova Blast 3 and also in the Nimbus 25. And it's worked out really well for me in those other shoes as well. There's also a kind of a little strap here. So if you wanted to tuck the laces in underneath, you could do that with this little piece of elastic that's on the top of the shoe. And there's also, in addition to a really nice pull tab on the back, there are gator attachments on the shoes in case you're getting into some really nasty elements. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a pretty respectable weight given the fact that it is such a big shoe. It's 10.8 ounces for the men and 306 grams, or for the women in a size seven, it's going to come in at 9.4 ounces or 266 grams. All right, now that we've gotten those numbers out of the way, let's talk about what it was really like to run in this shoe. And I got to tell you, I had an absolute blast running in this shoe. It is easily going to be one of my favorite trail running shoes of the year. The FF Blast Plus is a wonderful addition to this shoe. It's not too squishy, which I think a lot of you guys are going to be a little bit worried about when you see that there's this much stack height and this much FF Blast Plus, but it really does work in a trail package. It's kind of in between like a Nimbus 25 and a Nova Blast 3, but like also really built up for the trails as well. It's got those corkscrew lugs on the bottom of this shoe that make it really nice and grippy for a lot of the kinds of terrain that I was able to encounter in my testing of the shoe. Now, I use it in a lot of the parks and trails that are around me that are available here in the Midwest. I live in Northern Illinois, outside of Chicago, right along the Wisconsin border. So there aren't like crazy trails and super technical things around here, but I can get up in the woods if there's a lot of up and down. Sometimes conditions can get a little bit messy. And I felt like for what I have around me, definitely the Tribuco Max 2 can handle 
anything that I've got in kind of my neighborhood. I also had the chance to take it out on some of the hills where my in-laws live in Northeast Iowa, which again, pretty much the same kind of like geographic region. But I also had the chance to take it up on some trails up in Colorado when I was in Boulder earlier in the month. Now, granted, we didn't take it on the most intense trail that you can imagine. We didn't summit a 14er in it. Frankly, I don't know that I can summit a 14er regardless of the shoe, but we did take it out for a trail run that I was told was going to be pretty much a gravel path, but there were some gnarly bits in there and I felt like the Trabuco Max 2 and those corkscrew lugs on the outsole did a really fantastic job making me feel very secure no matter what the conditions were. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it might not be the shoe if you are scrambling through scree or if you are muddy fell running, but for me, it can handle most of the trails that I am capable of handling in most of the kinds of conditions that I would venture an attempt at doing trail running in. It also happens to have some pretty good road manners too. All right, so now let's try to summarize what I think this shoe is best for and also provide some shoes that it can be complemented with and also compared against. First, let's talk about what this shoe is best for. I think that this is a great option for trail runners looking for a versatile long run shoe for long adventures over mild to moderate terrain. Now, in terms of shoes that I think you can pair it with, I'm gonna give you a road option and a trail option. First for the road option, I've already been mentioned it a bunch of times during this video. I think that the road complement to this shoe is going to be the Nimbus 25. I feel like there's just a lot of similarities. They're both very big shoes. They're both very comfortable and they're also both very good for being in for hours at a time. Now, if you are looking for a trail option that's gonna be better suited for some of those extra fast days, then I think that an option that would be interesting for you guys to check out is the Brooks Catamount version two. Now, I'm not sure that I would take this out for the absolute muddiest of days, but if you're just looking to pick up the pace and get a little bit more aggressive on the trails, maybe if we have a shorter, faster day on the docket, then I feel like the Brooks Catamount two with that DNA flash midsole is going to be a really on option. Now let's talk about the buying guide and some of the competition for the shoe, some things that we can contrast the Trabuco Max 2 against. The Trabuco Max 2 is already on sale now and it retails for $150. And while that is a lot of money to pay for a shoe, I absolutely love the price. You're getting a lot of shoe here in the Trabuco Max 2 and I think for $150, I feel like you're also getting a lot of value because let's look at some of the competition. One of the shoes that I think about the most when I think about the Trubuco Max 2 and its versatility, I think about the Hoka Mafate Speed 4. I feel like these two shoes are very similar in terms of when I would choose the shoe and what kind of level of comfort and nimbleness they provide. The Hoka Mafate Speed 4 retails at $185, which is a whopping amount of money to pay for the shoe. I feel like that shoe is absolutely worth every penny of the $185, and that's why I feel like the Tribuco Max 2 at 150 is kind of a bargain. Now, the other trail shoe that I think about when I think about the Tribuco Max 2, and this one is kind of like a little bit more chill of a shoe, a little bit even bigger and a little bit even more relaxed, is gonna be the New Balance Fresh Foam More Trail version three. It's based off of the More version four. Their naming conventions are really silly, but this is the most recent version of the More trail. They're both very much trail ready and useful for a lot of different kinds of trails that I feel like the majority of kind of like normal trail runners will encounter on a regular basis. This one is very much more relaxed and it very much feels like a big shoe. This one's a little bit more nimble, but they both provide a very tantalizing amount of comfort for those extra, extra long runs. And maybe some days where you just want to be a little bit easier on the trails. This shoe comes in at a price of $160. So still a little bit more expensive than the Trabuco Max 2, but that's where kind of the competition is. And that's why I think that the Trabuco Max 2 at 150 bucks is a really good deal. So those are my thoughts on the Tribuco Max 2 from ASICS. I feel like the inclusion of FF Blast Plus in their trail shoes makes me much more willing to try additional trail offerings from ASICS. And I'm looking forward to seeing where they're taking this new foam in the trail space. If you have any other questions about the Tribuco Max 2, let me know in the comments down below. Or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. And I'd love to see you there in the chat. That's all for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?